Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday at 12, 15 p.m. Now, sometimes when we listen to the things that are going on in this world, it can be really shaky. It can be really nerve-wracking. It can have you shaking at your knees. But you have to decide where is your faith line. Who do you believe in? Whose report? Are you going to believe? That's on a daily basis as well, because life hits us on the left and on the right. And we have to remember, God is not surprised by the crisis that just arose in your daily agenda. God is not shocked by the crisis that showed up on Tuesday or the problem that showed up on Wednesday. God is not shocked. He's not taken aback by the, you know, by what hits you on Friday. So understand that for every crisis, for every problem, for every situation, for every area of fear, God already has the solution that's going to work in your favor because he is for you, not against you, unless you are against him. Hmm. But we won't deal with that part right now. We're dealing with those who are for him, in him, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, whose Savior, whose Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. All right. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Moving right along, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter five. Yes. And I'm not even going to turn to it. It basically says for, oh, I got to read the verse though. I think it's verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And now we're going to go to Hebrews 11. That is what I refer to as the faith chapter. Now listen to these little examples. Starting at verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, or in essence, tangible things were not made of tangible things that already existed. No, the tangible things were made simply by God's word. That's what that's really saying. Verse four, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before he translated, before his translation, he had his testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, It is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, this is one of the things, I'm stopping there for a minute, because this is one of the things that we don't always get about faith, okay? Now, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Do you know without faith, it's impossible to live for him. It's impossible to live a holy life. Why? Because when your nature, your original nature, which is being born in sin and shaping in iniquity, your original flesh wants to rise up and go toe to toe, word for word, tit for tat, 
<laughs> you curse me, I curse you back. That is our natural way of doing things. But when it takes faith, y'all, to shut your mouth when the other person is lamb blasting you in public. It takes faith to be quiet, to still your spirit when someone is accusing you of doing something you never did. That takes faith as well. It takes faith to go and do things that might be a little precarious by nature, but knowing that God told you to do it. Some levels of obedience really take a, mount, a mountain full of faith in order to do some of those things. So we have to decide, are we walking by faith? Or are we walking by sight? Are we walking by the dictates of God's spirit? Or are we walking by the dictates of self, me, myself, and I, which equals flesh, which equals sin? All right. So knowing that without faith, it is impossible to please God. We have to pray, pray, pray for God to inundate us with more and more power to believe, more and more ability to believe. And our abilities will be tested. Oh, yes, they will. Let me share a, a quick story. Years ago, now this is walking with the Lord and believing that he'll be there when you need him. Because as Jesus said out of his own mouth, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And as it says in Psalms, God is a very present help. And sometimes we don't believe he's a very present help. We don't always believe that, do we? But that's what the word says. So now our faith gets tested. There were a couple of times where I got stuck on the side of the road. And when and that was during the time when I was unsaved. And thank God my father would be there to come and rescue. Or I would call AAA or whatever. But I would get help. But I decided to pray a prayer that I had never prayed before. Just to kind of bring this down to brass tacks where we live. I said, Lord. Whether I have a new car, an old car, a raggedy putt-putt that's barely rolling around, whatever kind I have, this is my prayer to you. Whether I can afford AAA or I can't afford AAA, my request to you is if you know something is wrong with my car that's going to leave me stranded on the road for hours or for a too, too long period that you would see to it or could cause an accident. I pray that you would see to it that I would get a warning. I would see it because it would be the problem would arise right in front of my house, in my garage, on a parking lot somewhere where it can sit for a while without getting a ticket and I can get immediate help. The other prayer I prayed on that was if I ever am on the road and my car breaks down, my request to you is you would always have immediate help right there, whether I called for it or not. It would be right there within minutes. All right without me holding up traffic. I'm going to share, let me see, one, two. I'm going to share two examples with you. It'll, it'll tickle your funny bone. And then I'm going to share a prayer that I prayed this last week. I, I use these little personal stories because testimonies paint a picture and pictures are worth a thousand words. And this will make it a lot quicker for you to get what I'm saying. I was in the parking lot of the church. Milton and I 
were um, the service was over. We were fellowshipping outside and we hopped in our car and we're getting ready to go. And there was a problem. Uh oh, what's wrong? Right now, at this point, I said, okay, Lord, you know that prayer I prayed. <laughs> it's time. It's that time. <laughs> and one of the brothers came over and said, are you guys having a problem? And we said, yeah. So he said, pop your hood. So I popped the hood. And I mean, the help was right there. He said, I'm going to get you some oil and some this and some that. And when I come back, I'm going to put it in. And you should be good to go. Sure enough, he does it. It took a matter of about 15 minutes. He went to the store. He came back. Some of the other guys just stood around and kept us company while we waited. Because my husband was blind. He couldn't do it. Okay. So we're sitting there. And the guy comes and he solves the problem. He didn't even want us to pay him, to pay him back for the oil and whatever else he had to get. He didn't even... He didn't want us to pay him. It was just, here's your help, boom, problem, arise, problem, solved, over and done. That was one. Number two, I'm driving my car, right? On, uh, I'm coming off the 210 freeway, and I'm getting off on the Lake Avenue exit. That is not a place to break down, y'all, not during rush hour traffic. All right, so here I am coming up the ramp. It's an uphill climb to level off, or you know, as I approach the the uh, the signal light, and the car dies. Lights go out. Everything is dead, and I'm like, oh no! I put the thing in park. I pop the hood so people know it's a mechanical problem. Go around, and one car pulls up behind me and goes around and makes the, the green light. So I didn't cause anybody to miss the light. The next car that's behind me is a van. That guy puts his van in park, comes out and asks me if I need help. Now, for you to know what a present help God is, this was a total stranger. You hear me? He pushes me through the intersection so that I can park in a safe spot. He has me pop the hood. He tells me my battery is dead. It's corroded. It, it, it needs to be buried. I have no way to get to a battery. I didn't have AAA at that time. Um, asking him if there's a phone booth I need to call and see if I can get somebody to come down. He said, no problem. He says, where do you need to go? And I said, oh, I said, I need to get a battery from Sears. I don't have the money, but I have a credit line with them. And that's the only way I'll be able to get it. And he said, oh, I'll take you. And I said, oh, no. I said, it's 10 miles away. He said, no problem. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is a very present help. That man drove me all the way to Sears. Waited for me to get the battery brought me all the way back to the car, put the battery in the car, would not take any gas money, would not take any, I mean, not, I couldn't believe how that prayer was constantly answered in my life. I have never, since I prayed that prayer, been stranded on the side of a road. Another time the car died and I it was the, the one time I ran out of gas and I'm sitting there feeling like an idiot because I watched my instruments I just wasn't paying attention and sure enough I say okay Lord that prayer now I, I need that prayer because I didn't have AAA or anything at that moment so I, I got the car in a lane now it's not parked it's in a lane and I have to put it in neutral and push and steer it over. Thank God there was a place to park it. I popped the hood. And as soon as I popped the hood, somebody hollers, Pat, is that you? 
I mean, it wasn't even two minutes. And I'm trying to figure where the voice is coming from. And it's a couple across the street. I'm talking about faith now. Don't, don't let me lose you. Some neighbors across the street, it was a couple that I had met through my ex-husband years ago. I couldn't, re I mean, I barely remembered them. And they told me, you remember your husband brought you over? We met you that day and you stayed over for about a half an hour. And I remembered once they said it. And then the guy goes and gets me gas, which was two blocks away, comes right back, puts the gas in the car. And then I, I had the money to get the gas. But the thing is, that was an immediate rescue. God is right there for you. Sometimes you have to ask God, show me how to pray those witty prayers. Because the more specific your prayers are, the more specific God's answer to your prayers will be on a continual basis. That prayer is constantly uh, answered, even to this day. Now, another thing that um, I had prayed this last week was that God would see to it that I said, Lord, you remember when you did this and you remember when you did that for me and you did the other and you pit, hand picked the guy to, to do my plumbing when you told me to go around the corner and get the, a salon around the corner. So my question is now, would you handpick somebody to come and help me with all the things I need done to install my lights, to install the faucets that have been sitting in the box for two years? Would you, because I can't afford the full price of a plumber, I can't afford the full price of an electrician, but you can make a way where there is no way. So either send the money or enable me, send the people to do the work, uh, d d something, but send me help because it, it, it's going to take, you know, three or $4,000 to get this done on a normal basis, but you can bring that price way down by who you send. So in the meantime, I don't know who to call on because everybody's not trustworthy. Everybody's not good at what they do. Everybody's heart's not in what they do. And everybody's not interested in rescuing a widow. <laughs> so here I am. Please send the person. Somehow send the person. Later on that afternoon, I get a knock on my door. Same day. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking through the window. And this old man, he looks like he's 80 years old. He says, hi, I'm going to be um, next door, but I'll be blocking your driveway. Do you have to go anywhere? And I said, no. So sure enough, he's there for about 15 minutes. And I'm saying, oh, I wonder if that's your blessing. Let me go and introduce myself and see what kind of work he does. He's gone. Oh, I missed it. Okay, well, maybe that wasn't it. Lord, if that's the one, let me see him again. And here we are this week, <laughs> five days later or four days later. And um, I'm heading out my, my driveway to go pay a bill and go to the bank so that I can activate my credit card that I've been sitting on forever because I find I need this work done. I can't just keep sitting on this forever. So sure enough, I go outside and I pull the car out and that guy in his truck is there. And I said, oh, really, Lord? And he's right there where I can talk to him. Turns out he's a born again Christian. He said, uh, he said, I believe in helping the widows. Uh, he did, he, you know, uh, there was no price mentioned yet because he hadn't had time to come and look that that'll be set up another day, but he knows an electrician, a licensed electrician, and he's going to talk to him. I think it's somebody from his church. So we'll see what God does. But the bottom line is when you need help, 
you know, like people can go on trips, they can fly here, they can fly there. And you might not be one of those people. I know I'm not. I would love to be able to travel the world. I would love to own a boat and get out and, and jet ski and do all kind of fun things. The money is not there. So that's just some, that's a pipe dream. But when it comes to necessities and getting things done in your house, even that should be more readily available. But as the system is set up, it's not. So you have to pray and ask God for extra help that is not readily available in your hand. You have to ask God to hand pick the people so that you don't end up with somebody that, that, that backstabs you and takes your money at the same time. So the bottom line is when you are trusting God, you have to trust him all the way. The time when, when I, <laughs> my husband and I, we're praying for his son. And the Lord told me to give him $10,000, not lend it, give it. And that was the only money we had. It was borrowed money on top of it. That was set aside for Milton's hot tub to be installed. His one little dream. And we had to give it away. But guess what? He got to enjoy his hot tub here. So he didn't miss out by taking that leap. He didn't miss out by taking money that was earmarked for one thing to help somebody else who was in dire need, who would have been out on the street without it. And the confirmation was he said out of his own mouth, oh, if God would have solved the problem, it would take about $10,000. I said, come on over tomorrow and pick it up. So See, when God wants to bless you, you have to really believe not only that he is, but that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's, you're not going to get all yours on the other side. You're going to get some of yours right here. But are you walking by faith in obedience? Are you walking by faith? In, the, in your character? Are you walking by faith in your giving? Are you walking by faith in your helping? Are you walking by faith in shutting your mouth when you want to defend yourself and you have every right to, and they're lying out of both sides of their mouth about you, making people look at you funny, ruining your reputation, and God says, shh, don't say a mumbling word. I got this. And everything in you is screaming, but Lord, I want to tell them off. I want to set the record straight. Shh, I got this. See, when you put things in God's hands, you will find solutions that come without the necessity of you breaking a sweat. His solutions will come without you beating, beating the cement and, and watching your clock and the years go and the years go and the years go and the year. If you got to wait, you got to wait. It's no big deal. But when the fullness of time comes and God does it in his time clock, everything's going to be done well. Everything's going to be done without problem. You will find situations will either iron themselves out, go up in, in smoke, in a puff of smoke, blown away by the next breeze. Or the problem will be there with bells on it. I mean, the, the solution to your problem will be there with bells on your toes. Why? Because God is a very present help in trouble. Go with me to Psalms 46. Psalms 46. Let's see here. Where is it? I got to go to it too. So give me a second, y'all. Go with me to Psalms 46. This is one of my favorite scriptures. So I love it when the Lord lays that one on my heart. All right, 
And I want you to hear, no matter what's shaking, no matter what's quaking, no matter what's coming over the horizon, no matter what's coming down the pike, no matter what's sneaking up behind you, listen to this. Mm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the water thereof be roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathens raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the, he the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. That was verse 9 and 10 I added. So just know <clears throat> that God is right there. Nothing that comes up on you, on your blind side, will catch you by surprise. Nothing. Nothing. No car problem. No financial problem. No family crisis. No sickness. No death in the family. No, no flare-ups on your job. N no false accusations. Nothing catches him by surprise. But the good thing to pray is that God will keep all evil as far away from you as the East is from the West. Why? Because there are demonic attacks as well. And you want to know how to handle them, but you'd like to deal with them as little as possible. And that prayer has diminished the demonic attacks I had to dealt I had to deal with by at least 80, 90 percent. So, but God taught me how to deal. God taught me what to do, what to say to get rid of them. So when they come, they're trespassing, unless you're living a life of sin. When they come, they're trespassing. They don't have a right to be there unless you're dabbling in the occult, witchcraft, any of those things, uh, astrology, uh, uh, crystals, whatever. If you're dabbling in adultery and fornication and, and, and whatever, <laughs> then you have legally opened the door for a demon or a a, a, a swarm of demons to have legal right to meddle with your life however they choose up to God's limit because God will put a limit on that since he is the one always in control. So in order to keep the demons at bay, it behooves you to live a holy life. It behooves you to forgive it behooves you to show mercy. It behooves you to shut your mouth when you want to, you know, what you want to do with it. So whatever you do, when you obey God, it has to be by faith. By faith, because he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, let me share this real quick and then I'm done. Years ago, I learned by getting my feelings hurt constantly by the body of Christ. That when I obeyed God against my own grain, 
Sometimes it would be to the point of tears. God would, whew, even if I walked away feeling like a fool and I would go home and cry to God, God would do something inside of me and around me and let me know I am pleased with what you did. And what he would do inside of me, he would remove the hurt and he would replace it with this wonderful feeling of him being pleased. That is a reward in and of itself. But as time would go on, a lot of the rewards through your obedience is the exponential levels of growth the exponential levels of favor and mercy shown to you because you were determined to handle people and their funny ways according to God's will and you were also determined according to God's commandments to forgive no matter what. God rewards that right here in the land of the living. So when he says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, you diligently seek him when your feelings are hurt. You diligently seek him when you're afraid of what's coming down the pipe. You diligently seek him when you have no answer when you're at your wit's end. You diligently seek him when you need help and you don't have any. You diligently seek him when you need just for God to strengthen you on the inner man. You diligently seek him when you don't understand what the heck is going on or why. He will open your eyes and enable you to see. And another word for see is understand what's really going down. And he will reassure you. He will build up your levels of hope. He will encourage you. He will tell you through his word if you're seeking him in his word too. He will reaffirm you when somebody else just put you down and made you feel like a roach. He'll let you know, no, baby, you're beautifully and wonderfully made. I am for you, not against you. I am with you. You are mine. I am your father. I am your strength, your fortress, your buckler, the horn of your salvation, your high tower. I am your hiding place. I love you with an everlasting love. While other people treat you with contempt, you're getting God's reaffirming, his constant reaffirming. Why? Because you're diligently seeking him through the pain, through the loss, through the sickness, through the sorrow, through the fears. You're still seeking him because you know that he is the lifter up of your head. And you will never lose no matter what happens as long as you diligently seek him. Amen. I got to stop. God bless you. And I hope that lifts your spirits. You, you tried to compose yourself? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, my. another incredible sermon. We, we we started with faith. Uh, that's that's one of the one of my more favorite things is faith. Um.